image to text or audio to text. That's the multimodal learning from last year. ImageBind by MetaAI. Now that's real multimodal learning. ImageBind combines multiple modalities into one shared embedding space. That means we can do something like cross-modal retrieval. We can input an audio sequence, for example, some crackling fire, and retrieve an image of crackling fire. Or we can even combine two different modalities, like an image of a bird and sound of waves, to retrieve an image of the same bird in the sea. And what about very simply upgrading DALI 2 to use audio as an input instead of text? The really cool thing hereby is that ImageBind was never trained on audio and text data, nor text and depth, audio and IMU, depth and thermal, and so on. In fact, all the data that was needed was pairs of any modality and image, hence ImageBind. They bind each modality to images, or rather the image embedding space. The idea is actually really simple. We start with a pre-trained vision encoder, for example a VAT, that can encode image and videos. Images are just one-frame videos. With this image embedding, we can now train a different model to align its embeddings to the fixed image embedding. That means for this image and its embedding, we train a text encoder to produce an embedding for the image caption that is very similar to the image embedding. The same applies for depth data. We have our image embedding and now train a new depth encoder that produces an embedding similar to the corresponding image embedding. And again, the same goes for an image and its thermal data, a video and its audio data, and a video and its recorded IMU data. IMU data, by the way, is time series data recorded by accelerometers and gyroscopes. For example, here you have a video of a person cooking a meal who had accelerometers and gyroscopes attached to his body. Or this is how IMU data looks for a person doing gardening work. Now, this alignment is done using a contrastive loss. I have a video on contrastive learning, Simplia in particular, that I will link in the info card above. But the idea is to make embeddings of related examples, called positives, very similar, and unrelated examples, called negatives, very dissimilar. When dealing with two different modalities, like image and text, we make the embeddings for the image and its corresponding text similar, but for all other captions in a mini batch, we make them dissimilar. It's the exact same idea for every other modality. This stovetop image embedding and its corresponding depth image should be similar, and embeddings of other depth data should be dissimilar. You, you get the point. The loss that was used is a version of the basic contrastive loss, called InfoNCE. It does the same thing as just discussed, maximizes similarity between positive samples and minimizes similarity between negative samples, plus a bit of surrounding maths to make the whole thing mathematically more stable. In the end, we have aligned the embeddings of all modalities, text, depth, thermal, IMU and audio to those of the fixed image and video embeddings. What that means is that we now also have what the authors call emergent alignment, illustrated by the dashed lines. As mentioned in the beginning, the models were never trained on text and audio pairs, but since they now share an embedding space, the vision embedding space, we can now use those embeddings for cross-modal tasks. And why did they choose to use the vision embedding space as a binding modality? Well, images and videos naturally come paired with other modalities. Many videos also have audio that naturally comes with it. There are tons of large image-to-text datasets out there and further smaller datasets with image depth pairs, image thermal pairs and video IMU pairs. That said, you could in theory also use other modalities to bind to. For example, you could bind to language, which in fact has already been done. Okay. Now to the most exciting part for nerds like us that like to look at numbers and graphs. The experiments and results. The first thing to evaluate with multimodal representation learning models is often the zero-shot classification performance. That is, mapping an image and text labels into representation space and selecting the text label that was the closest to the image embedding, or the most similar. The issue with that is that ImageBind is the first technique that enables these emergent properties. For example, here we see ImageBind's performance on normal and emergent zero-shot classification. The normal classification is based on image and video data, since vision and text was directly used for training. But the other modalities, highlighted in blue, are the emergent ones. We can see that ImageBind is never better than the absolute state of the art that was specifically trained for the task, 
but is better than random. This row called text paired here refers to using a model for generating embeddings that was in fact trained on text data, so is not really emergent anymore. For the depth data, text paired means they render the depth data as a grayscale image and then use clip to generate the embedding. The difference is that clip was trained on image text data. And to avoid even more confusion, the normal image bind depth model directly takes the depth data that is not an image and aligns it with the actual corresponding image. So yeah, overall cool performance, but difficult to do fair comparisons. What we can properly look at is normal zero-shot text-based video retrieval. Again, that means we have embeddings for our videos in a database, and given a text query and its embedding, retrieve the video with the most similar embedding. Now, most common techniques only use the visual data in the videos for generating embeddings, here denoted by the V, but one could also use the audio embedding of the video, as done in one of the cases with image bind. Only using text to audio is an emergent capability, but does not perform the best, although it is better than this MIL NCE for R at 5 and R at 10. But when combining the audio embedding with the vision embedding, the performance skyrockets. That said, I would still have liked to see the pure vision embedding performance to see how large the gain of combining the vision and audio embeddings is. This combining of embeddings is literally just simple addition of the two embedding vectors. Another simple finding is the effect of scaling the image encoder. We can see that a bigger image encoder leads to better representations, measured by the emergent zero-shot classification. This also makes a lot of sense intuitively, right? Better visual representations improves the binding of modalities, i.e. improves the representations of the other modalities. I hope all of this isn't too confusing, but one final cool feature that I want to show you is using ImageBind as an evaluation tool. Since ImageBind relies on a good image encoder, we can choose different models like the default clip, but also Dino and Date, or Date, Date, Date. Given the vision encoder of choice, we can align all other encoders for each modality and evaluate the impact of the visual features. As you can see here, the Dino model overall seems to produce better visual features, since the audio and depth zero-shot classification accuracy is higher. And when it comes to the ImageNet 1K classification, we see that Dite performs better, but this is because Dite was trained with ImageNet supervision, so has already seen ImageNet data. Now, before we end this video, here is another fun use case. Object detection with audio queries. We can simply replace Detic's clip-based class embeddings with ImageBind's audio embeddings, which lets us use the object detector promptable with audio. And remember, this does not require any retraining of any model. But okay, that was ImageBind, the first real multimodal model that unifies a handful of modalities into one representation space thus enabling the discussed emergent properties. The idea again is actually pretty simple, but I really like it. That's the power of good research based on good idea versus training the next LLM by investing one billion dollars. But we of course need both, as everyone benefits from either type of research. And since we are going multimodal with all-in-one systems anyway, I think it is a great time to learn as much as possible about multimodal learning. So I'm sure you'll enjoy watching this video right here. Bye-bye.